Hi, in these videos, in this section, we've been looking at the war years. And I've said that in the war years, you can look at two things, Germany and the occupied countries. And it's these set of videos that we're really focusing on Germany itself and what's happening in Germany. In previous videos, we looked at the impact of war in the early years. In the last video, we looked at the impact of war on opposition. And in this video, I'd like to look at the impact of war in the latter war years. And what was happening in Germany from 1943, 44 and 45. And really to look at what was the impact of these later war years on the German people. And as this photo of Dresden shows, it was pretty bad. The latter war years were very, very different from those early war years. In the early war years, the Nazis had been doing very well in the war. 1943 was a turning point. And this photo here is from the Battle of Stalingrad. And the Battle of Stalingrad, which really came to an end in February of 1943, was the first time that significantly the Nazis had lost in the Second World War. After this battle, they started losing in Northern Africa, and really, they started losing in lots of different places. And it was this that was a turning point in the war. And as a result of this being a turning point in the war, it funnily enough changed the impact on the German people. 1943 can really be summarised by the title, A Move to Total War. Because in February of 43, at the similar time that they were losing in the Battle of Stalingrad, Goebbels stood up in it, what was a sports palace with this massive phrase behind him, Totaler Krieg, Kurzwesterkrieg, which means total war, shortest war. And Goebbels was calling for a move to total war. In other words, the entire country needed to get behind the war in order to win it. This was going to involve bigger changes for the German people. The impact was huge. Women were now properly mobilised into the war. Three million were called to work, although in fact only one million did. And anything non-war related came to an end. So it was in 1943 the professional sport, for example, in Germany came to an end. There were much greater shortages than we saw in the early war years, and there was a massive move of propaganda. At the same time, it was really 1943 that saw the Americans properly join in the Second World War. And air raids began in Germany properly. There was a huge bombing in Hamburg in 43, and that fear of being bombed really was drilled into the German people. 1944, things got worse for Nazi Germany. And in this picture here, this is one of the landings at D-Day, because at D-Day, the Allies fought back against Nazi Germany and landed in Europe properly again. So the Americans, the French and the British were back now in Europe, fighting the Germans back towards their German borders. 1944 in, if we're looking at the impact of the German people, can really be summarised as the title of desperation. And for the German people, it was a more desperate situation. As we saw in the last video, it was in July of 44 that the July bomb plot had happened, where Hitler was nearly blown to pieces by Colonel Stauffenberg. That July bomb plot had a huge impact back in Germany and led to huge amounts of fear and really a resurgence of the SS. There were massive arrests, a massive number of executions. The SS, even in July, the latter days of July, arrested 7,000 people and 5,000 of those were executed. That meant the German people were even more scared than they were before. Goebbels himself was given a new title and became Reich trustee for total war. And he upped his efforts to really improve things for the war. Half a million workers were made soldiers and there was even more forced labor. So by the summer of 44, there were 7.6 million foreigners working in Germany to make sure that the economy was kept going. Women were needed and used even more, and that compulsory service age rose for women until 50. And then finally in 1944, in October of 44, the Volkssturm was created. Now those of you that watch telly, this was in essence like the dad's army of Germany. And all men who were aged between 16 and 60, who did not meet the military requirements, were forced to join the Volkssturm. Now funnily enough, all of you, I'm sure, can imagine this involved anyone who had um, a medical 
disability that meant they couldn't properly join the war were first forced to, for, forced to join the Volkssturm. So the Volkssturm involved mostly older men, as you can see here, who were above the age of army service, and those people who were in hospital who may not have been well enough to join the war. They were only given four days training, they were given no uniform, they were given completely old weaponry in order to join up. So they were given old rifles and captured weapons. And really the Volkssturm was really a propaganda piece because everybody knew that this band of just old middle-aged men really weren't going to protect the German people. But again, it shows the impact that this is having on ordinary people because even those people who weren't necessarily part of the war effort were suddenly being called up. 1945 opened, and in 1945, for the first time, the British and the Americans actually now enter Germany. And this is a picture of the American soldiers entering Germany for the first time. The Nazi Germans were being fought back bit by bit towards Berlin. And that fight back was brutal and involved some really quite horrific impacts for the Germans. And as this quote from the historian Ian Kershaw shows, this was not an easy year for the German people. As disastrous defeat loomed in early 1945, Germans were sometimes heard to say that they would prefer an end with horror to a horror without end. An end with horror was certainly what they experienced in ways and dimensions unprecedented in history. The end brought destruction and human loss on an immense scale. And if we're going to summarise really what 1945 is all about, it's about chaos, destruction and finally peace. And as Ian Kershaw just said, 1945, everything falls apart. As the Americans and the British and the Russians on the Eastern Front move towards Berlin, everything starts collapsing in Germany. There's even greater shortages than we've seen before and literally millions are forced to the point of starvation. Bombing hugely intensifies, and in particular in cities like Bre Berlin and in this picture here in Dresden, really the entire cities were firebombed and flattened. And Dresden itself was firebombed to such an extent that some people even argued that maybe the Allies really should be tried for war crimes given the levels of destruction that were faced in the city. And then finally, at the end of April, start of May, everything comes to an end. Hitler in his bunker in Berlin is surrounded by enemy troops. The Russians are closing in on the city and Hitler himself commits suicide. Goebbels also commits suicide. And those Nazis who are left finally agree to peace with the Allies and the Second World War comes to an end. But it comes to an end at a great cost. And you can see that in these broken pictures of cities like this, and this is Berlin. And lots of historians ask that question about, well, why was it that the German people fought to the bitter end? Because they really did fight right until that bitter end, until those last few days. Some people think it was due to fear. Other people think it was partly to do with the loyalty that they had built up over those last few years to Hitler and his Nazi regime. No matter what why they fought for Hitler and why they fought until this bitter end. One thing that we can definitely say though, is that really the impact of the later war years on the German people really definitely was an end with horror.